Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal, season closing in fast, deals getting done, and we've got another one right now on the cards, and that is David Raya. He is signing for Arsenal. Um, everything's been agreed now. Personal terms were agreed last week. We know that. Um, terms between Arsenal and Brentford have now been agreed. Um, there's lots of talk that the fee could be anything between 25 to 30 million pounds, probably one of those 25 million plus add-ons type deals. Um, but that's been agreed. And now the player himself will be having a medical at Arsenal and should be unveiled as an Arsenal player before the end of the week. David Raya will become Arsenal's goalkeeper. Will he be the number one goalkeeper? Will he be the number two goalkeeper? The thing is about it, it offers great competition. And um was interesting to see uh, Aaron Ramsdale talking about ESA saying, listen, bring it on, man. You know what I mean? This is what it's all about. He even talked about how he's gone to clubs before where a goalkeeper's been number one and he's come in and take it like what he did at Arsenal, isn't it? So it's what it is when you're a goalkeeper, you know? Um, it's competition for places. It's just that normally... In a lot of teams, you've kind of got your clear, clear number one and then your number two goalkeeper. And that's kind of the case with a lot of teams. You know what I mean? Liverpool, clear number one keeper. Man City, clear number one keeper. Um, at Arsenal now, you're literally going to have two keepers that you'd be like, you know, number one's Ramsdale, but this guy, number two, if Ramsdale's slipping, you know. Um, and there's still that debate amongst some fans Well did we really have to go and do this? I guess, listen, I, I just get the feeling that Matt Turner wanted to get a move, wanted to be a number one goalkeeper. He's now number one goalkeeper for the United States and, you know, probably wants to be in a club where he's playing as number one. You know I mean? The World Cup's coming up in a couple of years' time in America. Um, and then Arsenal just said, well, look, we can get this guy. We're getting some money for Matt Turner move for David Raya, who, you know, uh, it was a target for Arsenal, you know, a couple of seasons ago. And now they've got two absolutely top quality goalkeepers. There's nothing wrong with it. So um, another great bit of business by Arsenal in the transfer window and the spending goes up by Arsenal. Um, another player that Arsenal were very interested in, spoke about this one yesterday. There was a rumour, I think it was from Sport in Spain, that Arsenal had made a bid for Ansu Fati, um, the really, really talented 20-year-old who plays for Barcelona, but that deal was not back by Barcelona. They said uh, they weren't interested in selling him. That was according to the reports. However, really interesting to see the comments yesterday of uh, Xavi, the manager of Barcelona. Of course, they were playing Tottenham. They beat Tottenham. Um, beating Barca's not for everyone, Tottenham, right? But they beat Tottenham 4-2. Um but it was interesting in his comments, and 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 this is the quotes, what he said. He was asked about Ansu Fati and Ansu Fati being linked with a move away. And he said, until the 31st of August, a lot of things can happen. It will depend on financial fair play for us. Now, that, you know, what that says basically is that they could be forced to sell Ansu Fati, whether they like it or not, because... You know, we know Barcelona have been in this real mess over the last couple of years where they've basically overspent over the years and the FFP has caught up on them. And of course, financial fair play says that all teams have to live within their means and are only allowed to suffer a certain amount of losses every year. If not, you know, there's serious consequences. You can be dot points. You can be thrown out of European football. You can have transfer embargoes. So they could be forced to sell Fatty. So there might be a lot more to this Antu Fatty thing. We were talking about yesterday with rumours linking him with a move to Arsenal. And I think it's going to be one of those that we're going to, you know, Xavi himself is saying there, let's wait and see what happens from now till the end of the transfer window. So we'll see how that one goes. Another player that's been linked over about the past week or so, and the links are back again, is Emi Buendia of um, Aston Villa. Now, remember, as I, I spoke about this one a couple of weeks ago, in 2021, Arsenal were trying to sign him, even lodged a bid for £30 million, which was turned down. He ended up going to Aston Villa. Um, these rumours still keep, persist that Arsenal 
are plotting a move to try and get Buendia to Arsenal. Now, we know that uh, they're interested in a right winger. That you know, That's the one area you can say that it's not really you know, the same level of backup as you see, for instance, on the left wing. Um, and Buendia is a right winger. He's actually a versatile player who can play in multiple um, positions across the midfield area as well, but he can predominantly play as a right winger. And uh, Arsenal are interested um, in signing him. Now, whether Villa would let him go or not, it's a real interesting one. Villa has spent a lot of money in the uh, transfer window. They bought in Moussa Diaby for a, a massive fee. Surely he's going to start um, on that right wing. So what does that do for the chances of Emi Buendia? Um, and where will he end up? Will he stay at Villa or will he be on the move and will Arsenal swoop for him? I think this is one we're going to have to keep our eye on. I, I, I mean, I'd be surprised, but who knows with the window closing in. I mean, if you told me two weeks ago that Arsenal were going to get David Raya, I would have said to you, are they? What, what? You know, that, that come out of the blue. When we got Jurian Timber, that come out of the blue. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, the, the Kai Havertz one, that come out of the blue. You think about the pattern of this transfer window. A lot of them, the only one really that was the real predictive one was the Declan Rice um, signing. So um, who knows? Let's wait and see. Also been linked with Douglas Luiz again. Um, it's a publication called Football Insider. Again, claiming that both Arsenal and Spurs are interested in signing um, Douglas Luiz. Uh, they say that if he does move this summer, he preferred to move to Arsenal. Well, that's you know standard, isn't it? But he preferred to move to Arsenal rather than Spurs. Um, and again, could Arsenal make a move for Douglas Luiz? Remember last year on deadline day, we tried with a couple of bids to try and bring him in. Both of those failed. He ended up staying, signing a new contract. Is there any legs in this one? Again, as I said, it's been a bit of an unpredictable transfer window. So who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with Kieran Tierney? The Telegraph today linking him with a move to Rio Sociedad over there in Spain. Um, they would like to take Kieran Tierney on a season-long loan. Um, we know that Kieran Tierney at the moment has faced a bit of a battle. He, he hasn't started. I think I was looking at it and saying he hasn't started a preseason game. He's come on in literally every one of them, but he hasn't started. And, you know, we've seen Timber start as left back. He started at left back, of course, last week in the Community Shield. He started as a left back against Barcelona in the friendlies, right? We've seen, you know, um, Tommy Asu start as a left back. Zinchenko's not even in the team at the moment. He's been out injured, you know. We've seen Kivio start. I mean, literally, you've got three definite players ahead of him at the moment in that left-back position in, well, I'd say two, two definitely ahead of him in when Zinchenko comes back, Zinchenko, Timber, then Tierney, and then you could throw in Kivio or can play in that position as well. So are Arsenal going to keep hold of Kieran Tierney? He's a fan favourite. He always does a job when he comes on. Are Arsenal going to keep hold of him or will they sell him? I mean, I really, really doubt that they would let him go on loan. But it wouldn't surprise me if a big bid came in for Kieran Tierney before now and the end of the transfer window if Arsenal sold him. It wouldn't. So, again, let's keep our eyes on that one. Balogun, that one. It's literally every single day since his transfer window has started, we are talking about following Balogun and where he's going to go. We know about the Inter Milan links, although we're hearing today that Inter Milan are looking at Medi Taremi now of Porto, a player that we were linked with earlier on in the transfer window as possibly bringing him in as a cheaper option to get in um, Balogun. I mean, you know, Taremi's over 30, and they still want about £26 million pounds for him. Um, Balogun, of course, we know Arsenal really holding out for at least 45 to £50 million. Pounds, and why not? Number one, the amount of goals he scored. Number two, the real shortage of strikers out there. And also, Arsenal right now got a lot of clubs interested in his signature. Um spoke about it yesterday, how Monaco put a bid in for him. That was said to be around about £35 million, pounds, which was rejected by Arsenal. Lons are supposed to be interested over in France as well. Crystal Palace, West Ham, who, you know, um, they could lose Paqueta. They've already lost Gamaka. 
they might have a lot of money and be able to come in for him before the end of the transfer window. I think Arsenal being really smart on this one, holding out. There's still a way to go from now till the end of the transfer window and trying to get as much money as possible. There's a fan saying to me at the weekend, oh, we should lower his price. Why? Why should we lower his price? It's all about getting the amount, of ma the maximum amount of money for this player that we can. I saw, um, was it Livramento the other day, moved from Southampton um, to Newcastle. He's had an injury hit season all last year and he went for 40 million. How are we going to let Balligan go for 35 after he scored a striker? Not a right back like Livermore, a striker who scored all those goals last year. It would be criminal. So I agree with Arsenal holding out for as much as they possibly can get. Um, other outgoings that need to happen, one is Nicolas Pepe and reports today in the Daily Express that Arsenal and Pepe's uh, representatives are deadlocked over a mu mutual termination deal. Now, we've read about this a lot throughout the transfer window that Arsenal may be just willing to just terminate his contract and let him go for nothing just so that they can get those really high wages off the wage bill. Of course, they're going to lose money. We pay £72 million pounds for him. Um, but now we're hearing that Arsenal are saying, no, actually, we want a bit of money for you. You know what I mean? We would like to get something in the way of a fee for you, which is making a deal difficult um, for him because he's trying to get a move done to move to Besiktas, who um, would like to sign him as a free agent. And of course, if he signed on as a free agent, that benefits the player because then he can then go and get very high wages um, even at a club like Besiktas who wouldn't pay the sort of wages that a Premier League club would pay. So well, let's see how that one rumbles on. But Pepe is definitely going to go before the end of the transfer window. And could Tommy Asu go? I've spoken about this one before. Again, they, again today, rumours. This time from Gazzetta, Dello Sport over there in um, Italy. They are claiming that Arsenal have made it be known that they're not willing to loan... Um, Tommy Asu, Inter Milan are interested in a loan. And Arsenal are saying, if you want him, £26 million, no less than that, if you want him. Otherwise, he stays. Again, when you look at Tommy Asu's situation, an injury hit season last year, and then quite a few players ahead of him again, you know, because you've got Ben White, who's playing in that right-back position, who's been brilliant. Again, great in the community shield. You've got Jurian Timber, who can also play as a right back, right? So again, now Tommy Asu all of a sudden is, sudden is under serious pressure, and could it be a thing again that Arsenal cash in if a big deal comes in for him before the end of the transfer window? Another fan favorite, by the way. But Arsenal have spent a lot of money in this transfer window and may be willing to recoup some of that if they've got a player that's not going to figure a lot, or should they be keeping hold of him because of the Champions League? Lots of conundrums for Edu and for Mikel Arteta before the end of the transfer window, but those are the rumours for today. Don't forget to check out all of our previews coming up to the big opening game of the weekend, Arsenal versus Nottingham Forest. We've got box to box. We've got a preview from outside the Emirates. Look out for all of those. Our predicted 11 is going to be big. Thanks for watching the show, and I'll see you tomorrow. Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.